In the last two months, my calculation skills have improved by a lot. I'm calculating better, faster. And guys, this is basically what I've been doing. I've found books that have entire games and basically they do a good job at letting you know when you get to a critical moment, look for moves. Like in this one that I'm showing you right now, the order is calculate, right? So try to find the best move and calculate. And this is what I found myself struggling with in tournament games. I'll be calculating and either I'll get a little bit lazy or I'll be calculating variations and I'll forget. It was blurry, so that meant I was out of shape. So I started to do the most important thing for my games. I started to do it in training. So Let's take this one as an example. And before you do anything, let me tell you where this is coming from. So I'm reviewing the whole game. And of course, the moment I see bishop c6, I understand f5 is a weak square. And guys, all of you who already went over the so many lessons we've had on middle game strategy, you should be able to identify that as well. So knight g3 was played, queen b7. And now they say, take a moment to calculate. Now, knight f5 has to be a top candidate move, we need to calculate it. But before you do that, I want you to pay attention to this. How much time should I allocate to calculate? Well, exactly what you'd allocate in a real game. Typically, I have come to the conclusion, I've told you before in other videos, that I should be allocating 10 minutes, max 15 minutes. If I don't find something concrete, I gotta move along. Time management is extremely important when you play tournament games. So if you wanna do it, pause the video, give yourself 10 minutes, and see if you can make this work. Now, the main lines, of course, is if not a five, what to do if they take with the bishop, what to do if they take with the knight. Now, of course, I did not calculate the whole thing. I did not find the whole thing. So after I get to see what they did, and when I do, I do it all in my head first. I visualize, then I reproduce it. So I did try to calculate. I did learn what I missed. And of course, I practiced visualization. So assuming that you paused the video, assuming that you tried it, let me tell you first in your head what this is about. So of course, knight f5, first, if they castle the author of the book, he says, hey, when I was playing this game, I didn't even worry about it because I figured I'll be taking on e5. I have my queen and bishop by knight. This would be, it's too good for me to calculate. I know there has to be something. So we've talked about intuition and how it plays an important role to not overcalculate. So castling is not a big deal, but then if knight f5, what if they take with the bishop first? What if they take with the knight first? Now, if knight f5, they take with the knight first, we take, bishop takes, and then the powerful move, guys, that it was difficult for me to consider was knight takes d6. Bishop takes, queen takes d6, and up to this point, I'm only going to get down in material if they take my rook. Now, if they take the rook, I have the powerful move, bishop c5. I know it's already getting blurry, but you gotta try to push through. One more time, knight f5, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. My knight takes on d6, bishop takes, queen takes on d6. So at that point, my queen is on d6, their bishop is on e4, and they're attacking my rook. If they go for the rook, then I go bishop c5, and I'm threatening to go queen e5. Deadly threat, king in the center, of course, they are in trouble. Now, if you saw this far, great, but guys, the really top players would also consider what if after knight f5, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d6, bishop d6, queen d6, what could my opponent do? What else could they do besides taking the rook? Well, they could do queen e7, and in that case, we have bishop takes, I mean, queen takes, king takes, bishop c5 check, king goes down, and then rook e1. You gotta be able to visualize that final position. Now, I'm gonna play it out on the board, but first, let's take a look at knight f5. What if they take with the bishop first? Well, easy, bishop takes, knight takes, and then you got queen g2 pinning that knight. I know, guys, it's not simple. But imagine if you do this consistently, 10, 15 minutes, calculating these critical positions. After a month, two, three, four, you're going to be sharp. You're going to be in way better shape than you were before. So knight f5, again, castling, this has to be suicide. You got f takes and then so many sacrifice ideas. You could even play g5. And if instead they go with this line, 
then Queen G2, this has to be way better already for the white pieces. So they're giving 1.20 already for white. And of course, mainly because we're threatening taking and then we're also putting pressure here. The rook could come to the open file. We're hitting G7. I don't want to be in black's position, of course. And then finally, what if they had taken here first? Well, this is the move that is so difficult to consider, guys. Then queen d6. And if they get the rook, the powerful bishop c5. And this is already made in three moves, no matter what. Now, the other, the last variation that we should be able to calculate, even though I would be happy if I calculate this far, guys. <laughs> Up to queen d6, bishop c5, right? Now, if instead they go queen e7, even if I don't consider this, well, it's not like I lost material, right? So it's not that critical. But still, queen e7, king e7, bishop c5 going up, that's a disaster. We talked about everything you need to know about the windmill, so that's uh, suicide. And if they go here, then rook h2e1, this is already almost three-point advantage for the white pieces. There you go, guys. Let me know if you found this useful, if you're doing it, or if you're thinking of doing it now. And of course, I will see you in our next video.